and uh, Jesus, as John labeled him, the, the Lamb of God, as the Bible tells us. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever thought about what a strange time it was for Mary. Um, you know, to have angel, an angel appear and tell you you're going to have a child, and to, to be able to say, well, I've never known a man, how can I have a child? And uh, then to, to have all the, the different things that, that went on. And it's no wonder the Bible says that Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. She just kept thinking, what, what is going on here? You know, what is God doing? And uh, then even after Jesus was born, you know, I, I can't imagine what it, might, it must have been like to raise Jesus, you know, the, the perfect child. <laughs> and uh, you know, the Bible talks about how that when they went to Jerusalem and he stayed behind talking to the teachers and, and when she asked him about it, he said, how is it that you sought me? Wished you not that I must be about my father's business? <laughs> and the Bible says again that she, uh, she kept all these sayings in her heart. And uh, it, was, it was a strange time for her. And you know, some people honor Mary. In, uh, in Luke 11, it talks about a, a person came up while Jesus was, was speaking and um, said this, Blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. Basically, she said, Bless Mary, you know, hail Mary. Jesus said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You know, Mary said of God that he was her Savior. Mary had to be saved. Now, she was trusting the Lord. She called herself his handmaiden. That means his servant, his slave. She didn't call herself the mother of God. She called herself his, his handmaiden. And the last you see of Mary in the Bible is Acts 1, where she's a member of the church at Jerusalem, along with her other sons, not the leader of the church, not re uh, revered in a special way by the church, but just one of the saints in the church, like we're saints in, in our church. And she was, I'm sure, a godly woman and, and blessed of the Lord, as she said. She said, I don't want to focus on Mary tonight. Let's concentrate on the Lamb. And you know, if you go through the Bible, God is always bringing up this subject of the Lamb. The very first, now I don't know if it was a, a lamb or a sheep that was killed, but in the, after sin came in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says that, that God uh, is the one. It says, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. God shed the first blood. Now, I think it was a sheep. I don't, I don't know that. But later on in chapter 4, you see Cain and Abel both offering sacrifices. Cain brings what he raised, fruit and vegetables, I guess. Abel brought a lamb. And the Bible says God rejected Cain's offering and accepted Abel's. And the difference was the blood. It was the lamb. The Bible says without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins. Now, forgiveness of sins is not by whatever means we choose. It's not by our works. It's not by what's convenient to us. And so the first thing you see about this lamb is the necessity. There must be blood. There must be a lamb for forgiveness of sins. Without the shedding of blood, Hebrews 9.22, there, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness of sins. It has to be blood. It has to be God's way. Well, then in Genesis 22, you see Abraham and Isaac. Uh, this is a very strange story, but God tells Abraham to take his son, his only son, and offer him as a sacrifice. Well, the next morning, off they head, straight away, obedience. In Genesis 22, verse 7, Isaac notices something. He says, Father, here am I. Uh, I'm sorry, he said, Father, uh, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Where is the lamb? Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Isn't it amazing how God puts those words together? He puts it exactly the way it is. We see not only the necessity but we see the substitutionary quality of the, of the lamb. He's a substitute. God will provide himself a lamb. See, Mary's lamb, or really God's lamb, took my place. God's lamb took your place. In, uh, later on in that chapter, it's Genesis uh, 22, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. That means God will see to it. It's so important for us to understand that. We don't have to see to it. God will see to it. That's where the lamb comes in. It has to be a lamb, and it has to take our place. Over and over in Exodus and Leviticus, you see the sacrifices. 
One of those is, is the Passover in Exodus chapter 12. When Israel was about to leave Egypt, God gave them the task of killing a lamb, taking the blood, and putting it on the doorposts. And the Bible says, here's the words, let's see, um, verse 13, it says, The blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's why it's called the Passover. The angel of death would, would pass over. There, there would be no death in that house that night. But the thing you see here, particularly, is the lamb's character. And all through these sacrifices, in Genesis 12, he said to them, um, Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take them, every man a lamb. And then in verse 5 he says, Your lamb shall be without blemish. We see the character of the lamb. And the reason, when John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, the Bible tells us he was the only one who would qualify. Let, let me read you the verse. It's in 1 Peter chapter 1. He says, For as much as you know that we're not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You see, we see the character of the lamb. It has to be without blemish and without spot. None of us qualify. We're born with a sin nature. We sin uh, all the time. But not Jesus. Jesus is the spotless lamb of God. Only in Christ can we find the, the sacrifice, the lamb that, that God required. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it talks about how He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Never sin, the perfect sacrifice. In the tabernacle was the mercy seat. And once a year, the high priest would go in and put the blood on the mercy seat. It's where we get the word propitiation. It means a covering, the mercy seat. And Jesus' blood is the covering, only Jesus' blood. See, when the Bible says, without the shedding of blood is no remission, it's not just any blood. It's with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 John says, the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Well, one more thing. In Isaiah, we see that the Lamb is, is a person. Now, we've, we've seen that already because we've looked at Jesus Christ. But in Isaiah chapter 53... Uh, verse 4, Surely He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We've turned every one to His own way, and the Lord hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he openeth, opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. In, in Isaiah, and right through the rest of Scripture, we see that that lamb is, is a person, and it's the person of Jesus Christ. Like I said, when John the Baptist saw him, said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. We see the Lamb. Someday the Bible says every eye will see him. That's an amazing thing. In the book of Revelation, it also says that that lamb is also the lion. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just an incredible thing. In Revelation uh, chapter 5 and verse 5, One of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. Uh, they'd been crying, saying, Who can open the book? He said, The Lion of Judah. Behold, I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain. And later on he says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. They said with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The Lamb of God. Uh, that's the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's not just a symbol. Uh, Christ became a man. 
God uh, manifest in the flesh and suffered and, and died for our sins. You know, all the lambs before that, and there would have been thousands, were just a representation. They were just a picture, a symbol of the real lamb. And the real lamb is Jesus. Uh, the Bible shows us the necessity of the lamb, uh, that he's our substitute, the character of the lamb, pure and spotless. And we see the person of the lamb is, is Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us he's the only way of salvation. You know, the necessity is for the blood. Without the shedding of blood is no remission. But like I said, it's not just any blood. It's the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, that cleanseth us from all sin. And the Bible says one of the things that Mary said was uh, she called upon God as her Savior. Mary trusted in God her Savior. Jesus, the Lamb, is that Savior. Don't be like Cain and just think you can come to God any way you choose. Be like Abel. Be like those who've come through the blood. Without the shedding of blood is, is no remission. Let me ask you this evening, who are you trusting? Who are you trusting? If you're trusting yourself, you'll be very disappointed. But if you'll trust the Lamb, the Lion of the tribe of Judah as well, you won't be disappointed. He's the perfect sacrifice for sins. He's the one that God will recognize. Like he said to Israel, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. There won't be the punishment for sin. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I want to encourage you tonight as, you, as we go through this Christmas time, as we think of the birth of Christ, don't just think of Jesus as a baby. Jesus became a man. He died on the cross, buried, rose again. He's in heaven now. He's God in the flesh. And the reason he came, he said he came to seek, seek and to save that which was lost. That's us. That's all of us. Yeah, when God looks around for lost people, that's all of us. And uh, the Bible says he loved us so much that he was, he was willing to suffer and to die for our sins. Let me encourage you tonight. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you're not sure about eternity, uh, speak to me uh, after the service tonight. L let me or someone else show you from God's Word how you can know. And he said, these are written that you may know that you have eternal life. God's Word will give you that assurance. Let's have a word of, of prayer. Father, thank you so much for sending your Son. Lord, thank you for coming and living and dying for us and rising from the dead. Father, I pray if there are those here tonight that are not saved, that your Holy Spirit would help them to humbly uh, turn from their sin to you, that they might claim that precious blood uh, that would cleanse them. Uh, Lord, thank you for suffering for our sins and making it possible for us to be forgiven. Father, help us to understand these deep truths and help us to, to love you and live for you. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the, the time we could spend together this evening. Help it to make us uh, better people. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.